but then you just go in there and you make it work. You just make it happen and the age doesn't matter. I'm ready to make a million dollars in my business. Hey there, welcome to the Super Bloom Coach Podcast. The show for life coaches ready to 10X their business and bloom into undisputed thought leadership status. I'm Mariah Riona, an award-winning brand designer and certified life coach. I've spent over a decade helping incredible female entrepreneurs like you build luxurious high-end brands that stand out and attract their dream clients. Each week, I share the latest branding strategies, business growth tips, and personal insights to help you elevate your coaching business and thrive. Whether you're just starting out or looking to scale to new heights, this podcast is your roadmap to becoming a luxury thought leader in your niche. Get ready to learn, grow, and make an impact with the Super Bloom Coach podcast. Let's go. Hey coach. Okay. Today we are talking about being too old to start a new business and why that is never the case. You are never too old. Here's why. I think this is something that everybody kind of struggles with at some point in their life. They might think that they missed an opportunity or, you know, they let something great pass them by. And I think we, as we get older, we look back and sometimes can have a lot of regret for maybe things we didn't do, or especially things we didn't start sooner. If you know, you just found out that you want to be a life coach and you go through certification, but you've had another career before, you might be questioning yourself and asking like, am I crazy? Is it too crazy? Is it too late to start over? And I want to tell you, it's never too late. You're as long as your heart is beating and you are breathing, you are never too old to do something. You can always start something new. You can always start a new business if that is what you want to do. I was always one of the youngest people in my peer groups. I started, I think I was really close to that cutoff date in kindergarten. And so I was always the youngest kid in the class. And I was sort of used to that title. I was used to being the youngest. And then when I got into my 20s, things weren't so prescriptive as kindergarten, first grade, second grade, and we all started going on our own paths. I really, my life took a turn and I ended up doing a lot of different things. I didn't finish college right away. I ended up quitting. I think after my halfway through my junior year, I ended up going to beauty school. I got a cosmetology license. I started a photography business. I did all of these different things. And I remember being like, 23 or 24 and having a lot of regret because I saw some of my peers who had stuck with a more traditional route and they were seeing success in their, or what seemed like success at the time in their careers. And I felt like, oh, I've just been doing all these other things. And, you know, I wish that if I had stuck to this very traditional route, maybe I would be more successful, but that's just not what happened. And so I ended up starting a business and doing all of these things. I was a nanny for a while and I decided at age 26 to go back and finish my degree. I had actually just gotten divorced. I had gotten married pretty young to a not very nice person. And um, we were married for less than two years. So after my divorce, I didn't know what I wanted to do because I thought with this person that I had my whole life planned out. And then, you know, in a matter of weeks, everything changed. My life completely got flipped upside down. I want to say that it was the best thing that ever happened to me. I decided to go back to school. I had had a photography business with my ex, a wedding photography business of all things. I decided to keep running the business, but I've talked about this on this podcast before. I fell so in love with the business side of the photography business, with the branding and the marketing and the building the website and all the things that I decided I wanted to go back to school and become a graphic designer. And 
looking back, I just realized it never could have happened any other way. It had to happen the way that it happened because when I was first in school, when I was first in college, I was a dance major and I didn't even know what graphic design was. I had to have these life experiences to put me on the quote unquote right path. When I was 18 and going off to college, I never would have known or thought about being a brand designer or a website designer. Hey, Super Bloom coaches, let's take a quick break. This episode is sponsored by my exclusive Luxury Brand Leader program. If you're serious about elevating your coaching business, then you have to check this out. Luxury Brand Leader is your chance to work with me one-on-one -on -one to totally transform your brand and realign your business for exponential growth. This is the only logo and website design program designed exclusively for coaches that builds your luxury brand and sets you up as the go-to leader you were born to be. Imagine a complete 360 degree luxury brand transformation done in just 90 days. You'll get personalized coaching, cutting edge strategies, and the exact steps you need to become an unstoppable force in your industry. When you become a luxury brand leader, you can finally start to attract clients who daydream about working with you and they're willing to pay the big bucks to make it happen. Imagine being able to unapologetically raise your rates, magnetize high paying clients, create a captivating personal brand, and showcase your high value expertise. Are you ready for a branding experience that will revolutionize how you show up in your business? Apply to become a luxury brand leader today at mariariona.com. Remember, spots are limited and they fill up fast. Don't miss out on this incredible opportunity to transform your business. Apply now. So it was through all of this experience, owning my own business and really falling in love with web design, that's what inspired me to go back and get my degree in graphic design. But I was 26 when I went back to school. And at the time, I really worried because I was so much older than most of my peers. My friends in the design program, it was an art program and it was a four-year program. And they were 18 and right out of high school. And they had taken art classes in high school, which I never had. I was very intimidated but I realized that that thing that made me different being older, the thing that I was worried about, it's what made me so successful. I was 26 and they were 18. I had already lived on my own. I had had jobs. I had paid rent on my own. I had been married. I knew that I wanted to get through school as quickly as possible and get a good paying salary job. A lot of my peers in the art program were like, well, I'm going to be a painting major or I'm going to be a sculpture major and not to knock any of those, but like they weren't driven by getting a job and, you know, paying rent. I had a very real world view um, when I went back to school. So that really led me to get my first agency job, which was my first and only ever salary job, which made me such a good designer. Didn't love working there. I was the only female in the office. All of the projects and the design style was very masculine. Um, just not my thing. But it was a great experience and I learned so much. It really, two things. It was the experience of learning and becoming a better designer. And then it also fueled my passion to go out and do what I really wanted to do, which was work with female entrepreneurs. I even remember then feeling, oh, I'm so old. All of my colleagues um, in this job, my first agency job, they were younger than me, but they were, you know, much more advanced and they were making more money than me. At first, I felt very insecure being at the time I was 28. I graduated that four year program in just two years. That's how hard I worked. Yeah, I went and worked at this agency and I did feel intimidated. I felt insecure about being 28. It made me worry what people would think and uh, how my coworkers would 
react to me and, and stuff like that. But it ended up being an amazing experience because we can have these ideas like, oh, I'm too old or, oh, this won't work or, oh, I'm not going to fit in, but it's just a thought. We know this, right? It's just a thought, but then you just go in there and you make it work. You just make it happen. And the age doesn't matter. And, you know, the experience doesn't matter. They hired me as a junior designer and I worked my butt off. And when I got my first annual review, you. They gave me one of the biggest raises they had ever given. That stuff doesn't matter. So I just want to say that like, sometimes we worry about our age and we let it stop us from doing really big things, but you have to realize that your life experience is your biggest superpower. Like education is great. Having a specific career track, that's fine. But all of the experience you've had in your entire life, if you can go through and look at what you're doing now and see how it's led you to that point, if you're happy, if you love what you're doing, you can see how all that experience has worked in your favor. Or if you're not, you're not really honing into, you know, what you want to be doing, living the life you love. And so you can go back and say, hey, what has my life experience? You know, if I don't love my job, if I'm not doing my highest calling, what is all the life experience I have? I don't care what your degrees in or, you know, your resume work experience. What has your life experience trained you to be? And if, you know, like I know, I think a lot of coaches, they desire to be coaches. They, they get certified and then they're basically starting over. And a lot of my clients that I talk to, they have a lot of fear of starting over. And there's sort of this sunk cost fallacy. A lot of my clients or doctors who want to become full-time coaches and they worry they're like well what about my whole medical degree was that you know I wasted all this time I wasted all this money none of it none of your life experience is a waste it all takes you to where you need to be if you're listening if you're if you're following your true calling none of it was a waste I can use myself in a, as an example I've done so many things um, in my lifetime, but none of it was a waste. It was all amazing. And I can see how I'm like right now, I'm so in love with what I'm doing. I'm in love with my life. I'm ready to make a million dollars in my business. And I have done so many crazy things. Like I said, I didn't follow a traditional schedule or path like most of my peers did. I've done a lot of different things, but they've all, they all are serving me now in my, in my career. And like, for example, you know, they said I went to beauty school and I worked as a hairstylist for a while. I still use those skills with my clients. Now we style their shoots and, you know, I get them set up with hair and makeup, all of that stuff that I learned. I remember in beauty school, they, I, I, one of the projects that we did, we had to learn how to launch a salon. That work was so practical. And I used that to help me launch a business. None of that was wasted. I also, you know, in high school and in college, I did a ton of theater. I sang in operas. I did musical theater. I did a ton of dance. And now I don't do, I don't do any of that, you could say, but None of that was wasted on me. I've shared before that I am actually very introverted and people are always surprised to hear that. Doing all of the theater and the dance gave me the confidence and the presence to start a YouTube channel, to get in front of people and speak, even though it terrified me. Being on stage as a kid growing up gave me the confidence to do things scared. None of that was wasted on me. I want to just dispel this myth that it's too late. I'd love for you to think back through the past few days, maybe few months, if something's come up in your life that you felt inspired to follow, whether that's starting a coaching business or writing a book or launching a podcast, whatever it is, as soon as you think that thought, 
if you've had the following thought pop up right after where either you say to yourself, oh, but I'm too old or, oh, it's too late or, oh, the space is too full. I'm already behind. You know, we might say, oh, I can't make a podcast. There's a billion podcasts out there. That space is too full already. There's no room for me. These are all thoughts that aren't serving you. It's just your brain trying to protect you. We want to live big, magnificent lives. So we can thank our brains for trying to keep us safe, and then we can do it anyway. And that's what I want to encourage you to do. So I really do want you to think back through the past few weeks and just be aware of anywhere where this has popped up, where you've had an inspiration and you've stopped yourself. You've had one of these tricky little thoughts, either I'm too old or it's too late. Decide to think something else. You can say, yeah, yeah, brain, you're allowed to think that. Or you can just be like, I'm not listening to you right now. It's fine that you think that, but I'm going to do it anyway. These are the moments that will really elevate your life. It's going against what everyone else is doing. Sometimes we, you know, we look around at our peer group. That's what makes us think, oh, I'm too old or it's too late for me. You don't have to do what everyone else is doing. In fact, those are the most extraordinary people are the ones that go against what everyone else is doing. And you can do that in your own life. It's your time, anytime that you have an inspiration, that you want to start something new, that you want to launch your business is the right time. If you're being called to do it, it's the right time. So don't let your brain keep you safe. Do it anyway. You've got this. Thanks for listening to this episode of Super Bloom Coach, the podcast for life coaches ready to 10X their business. If you enjoyed today's episode, I know you'll love my free course, Five Figure Clients, the secret to attracting high ticket coaching clients. Inside, I'll show you how I went from attracting bargain hunter clients to exclusively booking clients at a five figure price point. If you're ready to start working with clients who understand the tremendous value you bring to the table and to stop working with clients clients who don't, then this course is for you. Over four days, you'll learn why offering a high ticket service is better for you and your client, how to craft your irresistible high ticket offer that practically sells itself, and the two things you need to convey in order to sell high ticket services. Also, how to position yourself as a luxury brand leader so you can charge a premium for your top notch services. Sign up now at mariariona.com forward slash free dash course and start attracting those high ticket clients today. Don't miss out on this valuable opportunity to elevate your coaching business. Get instant access to your first lesson. And before you go, make sure to subscribe to Super Bloom Coach so you never miss an episode. We've got some incredible content lined up to help you 10X your coaching business and achieve your dreams. If you found value in today's episode, can you do me a quick favor and leave a review? Your feedback helps me reach more coaches like you who are ready to elevate their business. Thanks so much for listening. I'll see you next time.